This is the story of a battle. When the battle is won, it will be more important than the atom bomb. When the battle is won, man will have the power to determine what manner of people shall inherit the earth. This man is one of the leaders of this fight. His name is Walter Gilbert. He is a scientist. This is Harvard University, and this is the story of three men, Walter Gilbert, Mark Patagny, James Watson. In 1962, Professor Watson won the Nobel Prize for work on the structure of the gene, key to human heredity. Now working with him, Gilbert and Patagny, two outstanding young scientists, push forward his research to find another key to understand why one cell creates a genius and another gives man cancer. The name of this key is the repressor. If they and others who follow them succeed, man will ultimately control his own heredity. This is the story of their search and their fierce rivalry as they remember it. There are actually two races involved. The first race is just to discover the repressor itself. The second, in one sense, to show how it worked. The rivalry got bad at one stage, and we all went through a sort of very tense stage. It was something that we were doing in competition with each other, Mark, myself. The problem I wanted to solve more than any since I've been in science has been the repressor. It was a tremendous challenge to be able to, to solve that problem. The tension built up over this period of about a year and a half when we worked full blast to the exclusion of anything else in that terrible state where if you fail, you've just wasted your time. As in so many biological experiments, a negative answer is of no interest. Many people had tried and had failed. And most people at this stage were not willing to make the kind of investment of time and energy that we were putting in to try to get the thing. So there was the tension in that sense built up tremendously. You do something flashy or clever, that doesn't matter. It's what's important that counts what's important scientifically, what's really a big task. So, anyway, well, I started working on the repressor and then worked for about, what was it, 18 months. The main experience uh, throughout all this time was failure. You'd get up in the morning, work like a dog, put the thing on the counter, look at the counts, and it failed. And it failed. I mean, we tried many different things. In the meantime, I was constantly talking to Wally and we were beating our heads against the wall. I think we started about the same time. Maybe I started a little sooner, I'm not sure. Well, I was working uh, along my lines, and suddenly Wally and I uh, had this idea of how to proceed along another line. And so we found ourselves in this uh, uh, no-holes-barred competition. And um, uh, if it had been a few weeks or a month or two, that would have been one thing, but it went on for 18 months. It's the kind of experiment where if you don't succeed, it doesn't mean anything. A negative experiment often in biology doesn't mean anything. It's not like a, an exercise in logic. And then you'd look at the results. And you'd think you'd have a, an effect of a small, a few percent or something. You'd then work and work and work and it would fail. And it'd fail it over and over again. The main experience during this time being failure. But uh, the two of us in competition really, I think, helped drive us on. The general feeling was, sure, everybody says he's going to isolate the repressor. And a lot of guys have tried it. And they try it for a while and then they give up. Throughout their contest, it was these tallies that told them the score. For these machines are the final testing ground. They report whether elements brought together are behaving as scientists hope they will. This mechanical judge impartially tells them exactly where they are and can sometimes indicate the path they should take. No, we're almost out of, we're almost out of time here. Mark, yeah? hey, do you have any time? Uh, what, you want another machine? Yeah, I'm getting kicked off this machine in about 10 minutes. Uh, all right, just a minute. Every time you come to me, you bitch about the counter. Well, because that's just that's because it's never solved. But is it moonlighting? Well, I wouldn't want to say what it is. There just aren't enough counters. I mean, every other lab they have a counter for each lab, and as it is, we got everybody in the building working on three or four counters. It's as though you had to wait two or three days to do a sucrose run. And furthermore, half the counters aren't any good. I mean, if you're going to do double label counting, then they got to be first rate. It's just terrible. And then if two or three guys decide to do all their experiments at one time, bingo, you can't get on it for two or three weeks. Why? You mean those people day. aren't any good? I always think you're I, I wouldn't. Uh, 
wouldn't want to say they have the right to use the machine, but uh, unfortunately, if uh, there are three or four guys doing experiments, then uh, there just aren't enough machines. Wally, gets well, Wally has one most of the week. Somehow he manages to sign up way, way in advance. We never seem to seem to do that. Why? Because you. Well, you see, it's very inefficient. If you have to project when you're going to use the counter two weeks in advance, the chances are all you can do is just sign up for every night. You may use it, you may not. But if you try to realistically assess, you can't do that more than a day or two in advance. If you wait a day or two, till it's a day or two in advance, then you find it's all signed up. So then what? Well, can someone loan us one? I think so. I think you can lease them. It's very discouraging. So then what happens? So we can solve the problem by you putting in a new research grant application. We have guys up there now eight in the morning every Monday signing up for the whole week, pushing each other out of line, that kind of thing. So I have to yeah, but we never put in for money. Well, I'll put in for the money, but something's got to be done sooner than that. For Jim Watson at 40, this rivalry is reminiscent of his own life. At 23, he was involved in a similar struggle. It was the race to find the structure of DNA, the genetic material which blueprints what all living cells shall become, the key to life itself. Against the greatest minds of his time, Watson won. His reward was the Nobel Prize and fame. Having lived through the battle, he tries, with compassion and skill, to move the work forward. The real problem is we don't really understand the experiment still isn't working. The worst time is when you do the experiment the second time, because you never know. The only real pleasure is when you do it the third time. Well, in a way, it's a valuable kind of attitude to have. I think the only way is to carry something through, publish it, and then take responsibility for it. Knowing and that maybe there's a 2% chance you're wrong. Yeah, you always have to face that. Mark has been intense.